Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Look at a flame like this. Is it enough? Is it enough against all the shadow, all the deepness of the night? Is this light enough? Let's listen to the word from Jesus and see what he tells us. Welcome to worship.
communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and also with you. Let us pray. O oh God, you have prepared for those who love you joys beyond understanding. Pour into our hearts such love for you, that loving you above all things, we may obtain your promises, which exceed all we can desire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son and our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. These words come from Jesus to his closest friends on his last night with them. So these words, even though we're hearing them weeks after Easter, are spoken hours before Jesus' arrest in the upper room as Jesus says final things to his disciples in John chapter 15, verses 9 through 17. Jesus said, As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friend. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer because the servant does not know what the master is doing. 
but I have called you friends. Because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. I am giving you these commands so that you may love one another. This is the gospel of the Lord. You know, sometimes, sometimes I, I feel like Paul McCartney and John Lennon lied to us. Or that they were hopelessly naive. I, I grew up listening to the, the radio station that would play the, the Beatles hits most frequently. That was like a guarantee when we'd get in the family car. And so, from my earliest memories, I can hear the Beatles singing, Love is all you need. And it, to this day, it's one of the Beatles songs that my kids can recognize most easily. They'll, they'll hear those opening notes borrowed from the French National Anthem, and they'll go, hey, that's that Beatles song. I kind of love it that my kids know those opening notes not as La Marseille, the French National Anthem, but, oh, that's that Beatles song I know. And they'll be singing the whole rest of the day, love, 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 love is all you need. And it makes for a catchy refrain and a hit song. But there's a piece of me that thinks if it were right, if it were true that love is all you need, why'd the Beatles break up? If, if love is all you need, not just the Beatles, why, why is it that there is so much brokenness in the world around us, in our lives, in our relationships, in our communities, in our nation, in our world? Because we've, we've got, at least we think, Love. We, 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 we've got it. Why, why, why do we have so many troubles, so many challenges, if love really is all that we need? If it would have been enough, couldn't have kept John and Paul and George and Ringo all in a band together instead of going their separate ways. If love was really all you needed, why, why do some relationships fall apart? Why are there estrangements between parents and children or spouses, or friends. If love were really all we needed, why, why isn't there world peace and rainbows and unicorns, right? And I'm a little bit afraid to follow this train of thought all the way, to be honest, because Jesus sure sounds at first like basically the Beatles before the Beatles, right? Here's Jesus the last night he's got with his disciples and telling them, here, I've got one more chance to tell you the things that are important. And what does it come down to? Love. I mean, this sounds an awful lot like love is all you need, right? Here's the one thing I want you to do. Disciples, love one another the way I've loved you. Love one another. And man, the cynic in me is tempted to say, look how... Look how naive this Christianity thing is. Because here's Jesus just saying, love each other like it's so easy. Jesus just must not understand how complicated the world is. Jesus just mu must not understand that sometimes love isn't enough. Doesn't Jesus understand that it's a world where there's bottom lines and there's bills to be paid and there's dangers to be faced. Love just isn't enough. And it feels like every day of our lives to see division and anger and pettiness and greed and all kinds of rottenness in us and between us sure seems like it's evidence. Love isn't enough. All of us have some form of love in our lives and yet sure isn't enough. It's not all we need. It sure feels like. Maybe the question I'm a little bit afraid to put into words is, is there a difference between what Jesus says when he talks about love and what the Fab Four sang about in the mid 1960s. Because again, it, it sounds so good to say love is important, but it, 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 it seems like love is this awfully flimsy, awfully dangerously low flickering flame that as lovely a light as it is can easily be blown right out. And I think maybe that's what I'm afraid of when I hear these words of Jesus. 
That here, the last night he's got with his disciples, and he says, now I want you to love one another as though it was just a matter of do, do it, like by willpower, love, and, 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 and we, can, we can do it. My goodness, we, we keep blowing it. The hour, hours later, that same night after Jesus has given these words to his disciples, the same group of people all bail out on Jesus, refusing to love him with action, refusing to stick it out with him and stay with him in the garden or there keep vigil or stand in solidarity with him when he's on trial or even grieve with him at the cross. Most of them all abandon him. If it were simply a matter of Jesus saying, love each other more, how come they blow it so easily? To be honest, I think sometimes, I think sometimes we build our hope, we respectable religious people, on love as just an idea. As just be nice to people by your own willpower. And when you do a good enough job being nice to each other, that love will be enough. But that's a pretty flimsy, flickering flame, to be honest. And it seems to me the key, the critical difference between Jesus and John Lennon. The difference between the good news of the gospel and just a good rock and roll song. Is that when Jesus talks about love, it is a person. It's a person. In fact, it's, it's the one being of God. It's, it's, it's the source of that love that makes a difference. You're in my willpower to just try and be nice to each other. That runs out pretty quick. You, you and I, to be really honest, we have a hard time continuing to love to be good to one another, even to people who are stinkers to us, even to people who have hurt us, even to people who have bailed out on us. We have a hard time being decent and good and compassionate to people who we disagree with on uh, whatever the issues of the day are, or whose way of doing church is different, or people who look different or sound different. We have a, a, a whole long list of ways our love runs dry. And yeah, if the Christian hope rests just on our willpower to love people well, it's going to fall apart. It'll break apart faster than the Beatles did. When Jesus tells his disciples, love one another, and frames it as a command, this is what I'm telling you to do, it's worth noting that's not really the start, the source, the beginning. The whole thought is love one another the way I already love you. And Jesus even backs it up further. I'm only doing what God the Father has done first for me. I'm drawing you into my love. On our own, our love, yeah, is pretty flickle and, fickle and flighty and flimsy and can easily be blown out. But what Jesus offers us is a source that keeps relighting our flames, that keeps bringing us to life again and relighting our flames when they run out. Jesus continues, in a world where there is still plenty of danger and rottenness and scary things, at any moment, Jesus keeps bringing us his light again, his love again. That changes things. To be very honest, if all we are as church is a bunch of people telling each other, you should be more loving, you should be more loving, you should be more loving, that's not going to last long. And at some point, we're all going to get burned out or disappointed and disheartened with one another, doing a pretty rotten job of loving each other when it gets difficult. That's it. I mean, when, when, when we're a community of people who all think the same way, agree with everything on, with one another, or all um, just make small talk but never actually reveal what's going on inside our lives or our hearts, that's easy to be nice and to play at loving. It gets difficult when we get to the real difficulties of life, when we get to the real challenges or disagreements or places where you see it this way, I see it this way, how can we still love one another when the similarities run out, when the small talk runs out, when the feeling changes? How do we keep at it in those moments for every time that our fickle hearts blow out the flame, Jesus lights it again. He's the source. He's what makes this different. Jesus hasn't just started a club of people who promise they're going to be nice to each other as well as they can. Jesus has pulled us in to God's own love. That's what makes these words of Jesus good news and not just a lecture scolding us. 
I say this as a parent of two kids who sometimes can be very, very kind and compassionate and loving and good toward each other, but five minutes later can be at each other's throats. And sometimes it is so, so frustrating as a parent when it feels like all I can say back to them is be nice to your brother, be nice to your sister, show love to them. And my, my yelling, my, my saying it, no matter how loud or how many times I say it, can't make them love. What I can do is to show them love over and over and over again so that no matter how many times they're rotten to each other, no matter how many times they, they're mouthy back to their parents, no matter how many times they have a hard time keeping up their room or whatever the issue is, my love is able to change things, to change the dynamic. And I kind of think that's the difference that Jesus makes. Jesus hasn't just told his disciples, in order, in order to be good enough, you have to show a certain amount of kindness toward one another, and, and if you fail at that, that's it, this whole thing falls apart like a house of cards. We're gonna break up like the Beatles did. But instead, Jesus says, here's what I've called you to do. Love, love really is all you need, but it's not, it's not your willpower, love. It's not, it's not um, I like you and therefore I will do good things for you, but if you would change or if something, something happens and we disagree, I won't love you anymore. It's a love that starts with God, that relights our flames when they're running low. It's the good news that we are first and foremost beloved already. And because we are beloved, we are able to love others. The same way that when the candle gets blown out, Jesus' response is not to say, well, you missed it, you, you, you blew it, that's out, you're done. But you bring the flame to the candle again, over and over and over if need be. And it makes a new light all over again. What it is to be the people of God, what it is to be the followers of Jesus, is to say love isn't about my willpower, but about letting God continue to come back to me over and over and over again. And when my flame goes out, to let God light it again and to start again. And the world around us is still going to think this sounds awfully risky, awfully flimsy, awfully naive to say against all the darkness there is in the world, all we've got is just the power of love. Well. If all it were, were my willpower, my ability to love, that, that's not going to be enough. But God, yeah. God's love is enough. It is all that we need. Because when I realize that I'm beloved of God, I don't have to be afraid anymore. When I realize you're beloved, I don't get to see you as a uh, competition or danger or threat. I can't hate you anymore when I realize you're beloved too. When I see that God values every last one of us so deeply as to be willing to lay down God's own life on a cross for us, I can't do anything less than to recognize the infinite preciousness of your life and of mine too. The Beatles, let's say, were more right than they realized. Or maybe they could have been. In the end, love is all we need. But not love in the sense of a particular feeling, certainly not in the sense of romance that vanishes overnight. And not in the sense of my willpower, but in God, the inexhaustible source of love who keeps wrapping me in arms even when I'm a stinker and who keeps filling me again when my flame has gone out and lighting things all over again. That's, that's enough. That's our calling, to step out into dark places, places that are in shadow, places that feel like they need light brought to them. And not with our willpower or our awesomeness, but to say simply, let's, let's bring glimpses and glimmers and flickers of God's own love. That's our calling. It is possible for us to do that, even against all the deep shadow there is around. Because God is the one who makes the difference. So before this becomes a lecture, go be nice to people, go love more. No. 
let yourself be loved by the living God. And let that do what it will. Let the spark, the flame of God's love, kindle a light in your own life. And just see how it changes things. That's our witness in the world, dear ones. Simply to be people who bring Jesus' love for all of us right into the lives of one another. Be loved and let it flow through you. Together, let us profess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Transformed by the life-giving power of the empty tomb, let us pray for the church, for the world and for all those in need. 
Each part of our prayers today ends with the words, Lord, in your mercy, and you're invited to respond, hear our prayer. Called to a love that exceeds our understanding or desire, we pray, O oh God, for the church to embody Christ's perfect love in an imperfect world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Called to a love that requires difficult choices and decisions, we pray that you would give us self-discipline and forethought to be wise stewards of creation's resources, to use our time, our energy, our resources, and our lives well for the sake of love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Called to a love that yearns for peace and reconciliation, we pray for tolerance, civility, and respect between people of different cultures and understandings, opinions, and creeds. We pray that you would raise up faithful leaders as they govern in all places, in our communities and county, our state, our nation, and around the world, that all leaders would see themselves as servants entrusted with the common good, with justice, and with mercy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Called to a love that reaches out to the vulnerable and the fearful, we pray, O oh God, for the very young, for the very old, those in distress, those who are ill, those facing difficult diagnoses, and those who are caregivers. We pray that you would give energy and strength to those who are struggling with ailments in physical body, in their spirit, and in their mind, and for all those who surround and support them with love at every turn. We pray that your spirit would uphold us and that you would bind up broken hearts as well as wounded and hurt bodies. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Called to a love that bears fruit in action and in service, we pray for the right use of gifts in this congregation to welcome the stranger, to feed the hungry, to offer shelter for the homeless, to visit those who are homebound or alone. We pray that you would give us vision and courage, energy and resources, that we might be your faithful witnesses, reflecting the love of Jesus who laid down his life for us. We pray, too, for the ministries of our sister congregations, for neighboring communities of saints near and far, and for your church in the whole world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer called to a love that will not let us go and gathers us in beyond the grip of death. We pray with thanks for the lives of those who have gone before us and that you would give us, Lord God, the courage to walk in the footsteps of those who have given us an example in their ways of showing Christ-like love, those who have pointed us to you in their words and actions, and that you would sustain us in hope, in the promise that we will be reunited with those who have gone before us in your resurrection feast, which has no end. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, Lord God, and what else you see that we need, we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Yeah.
So is this enough? Well, on its own, no. It can be blown out just like that. But with a source of light that keeps coming, an offering to give itself away again. Yes. Yes, one slender flame really is enough. And with the light of Christ's love, now it's our turn. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.